Welcome and thank you for joining today's conference, How the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law Provides Economic Opportunity Through Federal Employment. Please note that all audience audio connections are muted until the Q&A portion of the call. Please open your chat panel by using the associated icon located at the bottom of your screen. If you need technical assistance, please send a chat and address the event services host. With that, I'll turn the call over to Seneca Franklin. Please go ahead. Thank you, Marvin, and good afternoon and welcome to session two of Understanding How the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law Will Improve Community Series. My name is Seneca Franklin. I'm Associate Director with the White House Initiative on Advancing Educational Equity, Excellence, and Economic Opportunity through Historically Black Colleges and Universities. Leaders from the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy, the Office of Personnel Management, the U.S. Departments of Energy, Interior, Labor, uh, Agriculture, and Transportation have joined me today here with my colleague, Monique Toussaint from the White House Initiative on Advancing Educational Equity, Excellence, and Economic Opportunity for Black Americans to discuss how Bill, the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, will provide economic opportunity through federal employment. Public service is an incredible journey. Um, it's an incredible honor um, and an exciting opportunity to use your skills to help the American people. Um, right now, as a result of President Biden's bipartisan infrastructure law, we, uh, we face a, a critical need to bring on talented people who want to serve a mission larger than themselves. The federal government is the largest employer in the country and provides employees competitive pay and benefits, um, as well as the opportunity to serve in mission-driven roles and do meaningful work to build a better America. The jobs needed to implement bill are on top of all the other critical hiring needs the federal government faces to invest in our communities, support the nation's economy, and ensure an equitable and bright future for our nation. These are exciting jobs um, and they're critically important. So simply put, we need to continue to hire great people to join these incredibly talented and dedicated federal employees that you'll meet here today. So let's go ahead and get started with our next speaker, Monique Toussaint. Thank you, Sedeca. Good afternoon. My name is Monique Toussaint, and I bring you greetings from the newly minted White House Initiative on Advancing Educational Excell Equity, Excellence, and Economic Opportunity for Black Americans. I am excited to be here today. But before I delve into the importance of today's event, let me just share a few words about what our office does at the U.S. Department of Education. My office was commissioned to improve educational outcomes for African Americans of all ages. Since our inception in 2012 by President Barack Obama, the initiative has worked with individuals, organizations, and institutions throughout the country to highlight and share effective national and local programs, policies, and practices that support the success of Black students and provide them with an education that prepares them for college, satisfying careers, and productive lives. The initiative leverages relationships with partners, new and traditional, to share positive and affirming narratives of Black students, highlight and disseminate promising and improving practices, as well as provide recommendations to accelerate Black educational excellence essential to the success of African American students from birth through college completion and career entry. We amplify an array of topics, but have focused on increasing access to high quality early learning, competitive K-12 coursework that provides access to STEM careers, the promotion of teacher diversity and quality, including the emphasis on cultural competency, as well as post-secondary success. In various working groups, we leverage resources at federal agencies like today to encourage the diversification of the teaching workforce from the beginning of the timeline with early learning professionals, as well as um, through post-secondary uh, education. And so with that being said, we also use outreach opportunities like today as one of our many mechanisms to elevate topics that advance equity and educational excellence for all Black students. The, our new executive order expanded our, our scope to include the advancement of economic opportunity, and that's where today's webinar plays a part. 
It is our goal to inform Black families and communities about various opportunities provided by the Biden Harris administration. This bipartisan infrastructure law will provide economic opportunity through federal employment, among other things. I hope to continue to engage stakeholders internally and externally the topics that support them, and I am grateful for the opportunity to collaborate with the White House Initiative on Advancing Educational Equity, Excellence, and Economic Opportunity through Historically Black Colleges and Universities, as well as the White House Office of Science, Technology, and Policy. I look forward to a robust discussion and learning from my fellow panelists and audience members. Sadika? Well, thank you so much, Monique. I think um, next we'll go over um, to the Chief Data Scientist of the uh, United States, Denise Ross, from the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy. Denise? Thank you, Sadika, and thank you so much for inviting me to be here today. As you mentioned, I'm the Chief Data Scientist of the United States, and in that role, I work closely with the White House Infrastructure Implementation Team, which is led by my former boss, Mitch Landrieu. When I served in Mayor Landrieu's IT department at the city of New Orleans a decade ago, I saw firsthand how in essential inclusive hiring was for building trust between government and the public and for delivering services in a way that resulted in tangible, meaningful outcomes. One thing that especially struck me was the value of bringing in early career professionals, people who grew up in a digital world and bring a fresh and modern approach to meeting the needs of our communities. Um, these principles, of course, apply even more so at the national scale. This infrastructure law is vast, $550 billion in new funding over five years with more than 375 distinct programs, from high-speed internet to creating reliable public transit to replacing lead pipes. Federal agencies will need to hire thousands of people to deliver on the bipartisan infrastructure law. And um, of course, about half of those are STEM jobs. Um, buried in those STEM jobs, I also have to mention, um, given my role um, with data, there are many jobs working with data to help shape investments that deliver on the promise of equity, good jobs, and making sure that we are building infrastructure that will withstand future climate conditions. These federal infrastructure STEM jobs are a perfect opportunity to diversify the federal workforce and bring new talent into this work. So we really want to reach STEM professionals who have historically not always thought of federal government as an employer. The federal infrastructure programs are looking for people with, a, with all levels of experience from early career talent to executives with years of experience acro across a wide range of disciplines. And I do want to emphasize that early career side of things. The federal government, especially at this time with the massive investments coming in through the infrastructure law and other recovery dollars, is a fantastic place to launch a career. We're hiring for positions in D.C. and in communities across the country. That means people can serve their country from their hometowns, and it opens up opportunities to ensure that our federal infrastructure workforce reflects the diversity of this nation. Today's webinar will cover some exciting opportunities in the bipartisan infrastructure law. Um, and if we're going to address all of our nation's challenges and opportunities, we will need all of our talent at the table. So thank you for spreading the word about these jobs and for considering federal service for your own career path. I want to close with a word of caution. Um, often when you read a government job posting, the title and the job description seem really boring. And the hiring process itself can be pretty bureaucratic. Um, but please don't let that fool you. These are very cool jobs. So I'll pass it back to you, Sadika. Well, thank you so much, Denise. You know, um, from a personal note, a federal career is really rewarding. Um, you all know the work that we do here at the initiative um, and across the other um, White House initiatives. It really allows us to grow our skills while giving back. So I want to thank you, Denise, for lending your expertise to the American people during this critical time. So now I'm going to pass the baton back to Monique Toussaint to kick off our first panel. And Monique, the floor is yours. Thank you, Sadika. I am again excited. And, you know, I really am looking forward to bringing up our speakers right now. And so to get us started, I am going to introduce Mr. Keenan Emmett, the management and a management analyst from our Office of Personal Management. Keenan. Thank you so much, Monique. Uh, give me one second while I pull up my screen and share my screen. 
And Seneca, if you could provide me sharing access, um, then I'll go ahead and get my screen pulled up. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, today I wanna run you through USA Jobs, um, give you a high level overview of how to use the platform, um, how to search for jobs, how to apply for jobs, and how to create your profile and add any documents you want to your profile to make applying at future times a much easier and simpler process. Um, so for those of you who don't know, USA Jobs is it's generally considered the front door to the federal government. And this is because this is where many of the federal jobs uh, that you'll find are posted. Um, and so before I jump into uh, searching for jobs and, and how to apply for jobs, I do wanna cover some of the information that you'll find on our landing page. And uh, for time's sake, I have skipped the login process, so I'm already signed into my account. Um, but when you do go to usajobs.gov and create your account, it's a very simple process. And then once you're signed in, this is where you will land. And so uh, from out the gate, you can come in and search for jobs if you're ready to do that. Um, but I do wanna run through some of the, the important information here on this landing page, um, because a lot of this information can be helpful to new job seekers, especially those who are new to uh, seeking jobs in the federal government and some of that uh, vernacular that's often used. And so scrolling down, um, there is some high level information here that proves to be really helpful. Um, so if you click the federal application process, you can take a look at the, the steps uh, involved in this process. So on the USA job side of things, so you can see each step, take a look at what each of those entail at a high level, um, all the way to the submitting of your application on the USA jobs portal. Um, from there, you'll be transitioned to the agency, to their talent acquisition system. Um, and then you will continue the process there uh, to finalize your application. So helpful information uh, when you come to the site, if you first wanna learn about that. And then exploring opportunities. Um, as was mentioned, there are many great uh, opportunities throughout the federal government and amazing jobs uh, and exciting jobs. And so this is just a list of some of the most urgent hiring needs across the federal government. Um, so a quick overview, you can take a look at some of these. Clicking into any one of these links will uh, take you directly to those job searches. Um, so you can find out more information and apply to those jobs. If you continue to scroll down the landing page, uh, you'll see that we have various hiring paths that you can explore. And hiring paths allow you to determine your eligibility for certain positions. Um, and so you can take a look at a number of these. Each of these uh, you can click into and find out more information. Um, so for example, if you click into the students and recent graduates hiring path, this will provide you with information on what makes students or recent graduates eligible for these certain positions. Um, and so you can find uh, eligibility information for various internship programs, uh, recent graduate program information, and the different opportunities there. Um, opportunities with Presidential Management Fellows Program, uh, which is a great program, and that's how I came into the federal government. Um, and then various other information uh, throughout each of these hiring paths uh, pages that you can take a look at. And so I won't go into all of these hiring paths, but I do encourage you um, to take a look at those hiring paths and see which ones you might qualify for. And, so, and then the last thing I do wanna share on our landing page is our event section. Um, so at the bottom of the landing page, you'll see that we have a number of events that are upcoming on our calendar. Um, and these can be anything from, as you see here, interviewing techniques, maybe it's information on how to craft your resume, um, or maybe it's career fair information or information that you can find from other agencies throughout the federal government. So coming to this event page, uh, I encourage you to check it out. There's a lot of great information and you can register for various webinars um, that include a number of topics um, and can be very helpful. So I do encourage you to take a look at that as well. So that pretty much covers the most of the information on the landing page. So now I'm gonna jump, jump into the search aspect and show you how to search for jobs um, and maybe narrow and refine that search so you can find that specific job you might be looking for. And so as you can see at the top um, of our search page on the landing page, 
Um, there is a keyword search and a location search. So you can search if you know the, the specific job or job title you might be looking for. You can put uh, input that. You can search by department or agency, maybe a specific occupation. Um, and then same with your location. If you know your location, you can input that as well. Um, and that will help you refine those searches to those specific locations. But we'll run through an example here. So um, say we're looking for something in the realm of biology. So if we type in biologist, you can see the various uh, autofills that we have here uh, for occupations or even just job titles. But we'll keep this one high level. We'll select biologist and we'll keep it open to, to anywhere. And so now you can see that my results show me biologist jobs um, throughout the federal government. Uh, and again, we kept this high level with the term biologist. And so as you scroll, you might see other terms with biologists, such as fish biologists, wildlife biologists. Um, but it is kind of all encompassing because we just use that more generally. I do want to show you, too, I will at a later point uh, in this presentation, show you how you can set preferences in your profile. And once you set those preferences, you can toggle this switch on and that will allow you to then search jobs based on preferences that you include in your profile. And again, I will show you how to do that. And so now you can see our search has been narrowed, uh, but 58 jobs still might be a large number of jobs to comb through. Um, and we may wanna refine that search to, to find things that are more pertinent to what we're looking for. Um, and so you can come over and see our, our top filters here, our right rail, and you can filter by a number of things. So I already mentioned hiring paths. Um, so you can search by these specific hiring paths. So again, maybe you're looking for recent graduate uh, opportunities or student opportunities. Um, maybe you're a veteran looking for veterans opportunities. And so again, um, finding out those uh, hiring path eligibilities is a great way to help you narrow your search. You can also narrow by pay. If you know your grade level, you can select a grade and narrow by grade. Uh, if you know the department or agency you're looking for, you can narrow by that as well as series. And then we even have more filters if you further want to refine that search. Um, so if you're looking for uh, positions that offer telework uh, or relocation assistance, uh, I also will note that we are adding a remote work feature. So you will be able to toggle this filter to search for remote work opportunities as well. And then as you scroll down various other uh, filters that you can refine your search by to, again, narrow down that search. One other thing I do want to point out on this page um, that's very helpful is the save this search feature. And so once you've input all of the filters that you're um, looking to, to put in to refine that search, once you have that narrowed down, if you want to save the search, you can go ahead and save that. You can type in a name. So maybe this is a certain uh, field you're looking in. And then anytime um, you, you'll, you'll receive an email anytime those notifications or those jobs are posted on USA Jobs. And so you can set that frequency to daily, weekly, monthly, or you don't even have to turn that on. So if, if you want to receive emails weekly on those jobs, you'll have those emails sent to your inbox. Um, so it's a handy way to stay on top of jobs you might be interested in that are being posted. And so now I want to jump into to one of these opportunities here and one of these job announcements and take a look at uh, the apply process for some of these. So if we click into any one of these, um, we'll click into this one. I'll run you through what a, a general job announcement looks like and then the apply process. And so every job that's posted um, has these high level overviews um, of each topic. So you can see up at the top here, we have our summary duties, requirements, um, et cetera. So you can click into any of these at any point and be taken directly to that section. But running through these sequentially, you'll see that uh, every job announcement starts with a summary. And so this will be some high level information about the job um, and, and just an, an overall summary of that job. Then again, back to those hiring paths, this, this will show who the job is open to. So this one's open to the public. Um, and so this might also include students, recent graduates, veterans, so various hiring paths here. Um, a lot of job announcements include videos of the agency or department you might be working for um, with information about them, so that could be helpful. The duties section uh, really just uh, lays out that information, uh, the duties that you'll be completing uh, for this job. 
Uh, requirements is an important section to take a look at uh, because this, these are the requirements uh, for the job. Uh, conditions of employment, these might be qualifications that you need um, to be eligible for this job or to qualify for this job. So that might be uh, work experience, it might be education experience, it might be a combination of both of those things. Um, so that's an important section to take a look at on each job announcement. As we scroll down, you will see how you'll be evaluated. This is also an important piece um, because this will show you exactly that, how you'll be evaluated um, for this position um, as a candidate. Um, and so this will pro provide you with useful information on uh, qualifications and, and how you'll be rated uh, when being evaluated for these positions. And then required documents, uh, this is gonna tell you exactly what you need to submit with your application package. Um, so take a look at that closely as well. And then finally, the how to apply. Um, and this is, uh, can be generally standard, but oftentimes it might differ with each agency. And then finally, contact information on how to contact that agency with any questions. So we'll jump back to the top. I do wanna point out too that our right rail section on this side provides some very high level information about each job posting. Um, so this is where you can find out information about uh, the closing dates for the application process. So important to pay attention to. Um, and then high level things such as salary, um, your pay scale or grade level, and then uh, locations, uh, telework eligible, and, and many other uh, important high level things. And then lastly, if you're not quite ready to apply to this job, you can always hit the save button and that will save that to your user dashboard, which I'm gonna jump into here shortly. Um, and so you can take a look at that um, and apply to those jobs at a later time if you're not quite ready. So with any job, when you're ready to apply, you can go ahead and click the apply button here. And this will take you to a five-step process um, to, to finish your application. And so this will all look similar on the USA job side of things for every job announcement. And so you'll always start with uh, the resume that needs to be included. So if you already have one uploaded, you can select that. You can also select to build a resume within our builder tool or upload a resume if you already have a resume that uh, you're ready to share. And so once you select that, you can hit save and continue. And then this will move to the next part of other documents that might need to be uh, required for this application. And if you forget, uh, while it is posted in the job announcement, if you come over here to the right side, this will inform you, click the drop down, inform you of any required documents that are necessary for this application. And so uh, resume, whether that's cover, cover letter or transcripts. So then again, you can upload those or you can select a few things that you already have input into your profile. Save and continue. This step just asks you to review to make sure that the information you included is accurate. And then this page is optional, it asks for demographic data. Um, so you're welcome to opt into that. However, if you don't want to, that's totally fine. You can deselect that button and your demographic data will not be shared. And so you can then just hit save and continue. And then lastly, on the USA job side of things, uh, we do ask you to certify that all the information that you've included in your application package is accurate um, and true to your knowledge. Uh, and so once you've done that, you will then click this button and then you'll be sent to the agency and their talent acquisition system um, to input any more information that might be required on their end. Uh, but you will leave the USA jobs uh, portal at this time. So now, lastly, I do wanna jump into uh, your user dashboard. So your user dashboard, uh, once you create your account, everyone has a user dashboard. And every time you apply to a job, save a job, save a search, that will appear on your user dashboard. And so now you can see the various applications that you have um, that are currently out. Um, if you scroll down, you'll be able to see their status. Um, so for example, the opportunity that we were just looking at, uh, it's currently accepting applications. And if we scroll over, we do see that we did not complete our application. Um, so that lets us know kind of the update there that we need to know. And then if we scroll down, we will see uh, some other statuses. So maybe this one has closed. You can see this one's closed. And so now they are reviewing applications. You can also look at your apply date when you applied and then to click this link and you can start to track that application. 
so various statuses, uh, the accepting, the reviewing, when the opportunity um, has closed and they've made a selection, that will also be noted, um, as well as if the opportunity has been canceled for any reason. So it's a great place to keep track of all your applications. I mentioned earlier, you could hit that save job on any uh, search or any uh, job an announcement, and then you can save that to your profile to come back at a later time to look at as well as the saved search piece. Again, where you'll receive updates based on your frequency that you set, you can come in, edit this, uh, change your frequency. Uh, you can take a look at those results, but if you wanted to edit the, the email notification settings, you could edit those, say you wanna go from a weekly to daily, you could do that here, or archive any searches. Uh, the other thing, once you have your account, is your profile. So you can come in and create a profile. In every one of these tiles that I'm going to scroll through, you can edit simply by clicking the edit button here up in the top right corner. And so this will be high level information, um, your about section, where you're located, uh, citizenship info, any hiring paths, uh, federal experience that you might have, or, um, or any experience that you might have. Uh, military service, education, all the information that you might want to include um, on your profile. See languages, organizations, even references if you want to upload those. And then documents. So you noticed when I was going through the application process that I already had some documents uploaded. Um, so this is a great way to make it easier, quicker and easier when you come in to, to apply to jobs or you find a job you might already have some uploaded resumes. And you can have up to five resumes. And I do wanna point out too, that this is where you can make your resume searchable. And so when you click this button here and you make your resume searchable, that allows federal recruiters to find your information, to find your resume. And that's done through our agency talent portal. Um, and so if that's something you're interested in, I highly recommend coming in and checking that out and clicking that option there so that federal recruiters might be able to find you and your information. The other documents, those again are going to be documents that are uh, nature of cover letters, might be transcripts, um, so DD-214s or, or veterans uh, info that you might have. Um, so you can include those here. You can see that you can include up to 10 of those. And again, at any point, you can also use the uh, add upload document or in the resume section, you can build your resume directly in the platform. And then preferences. So I showed you when I toggled on preferences for my job search that allowed me to refine my search. Um, this is where you can uh, update the, that information. And so once you input this information, you'll see that it says we use these preferences to improve your job search results. Um, so we'll only show the jobs that match those work preferences that you specify here. So again, this could be a great way to quickly uh, narrow down that, that those job results um, so when you're looking for jobs, it's much quicker and easier because those will be specific to your preferences. So you can see you can do it based on uh, desire to relocate, uh, travel information, work locations, appointment and work schedule. Um, so an, again, a great way to narrow that search. The last thing I do want to point out, um, that pretty much covers the profile, the search, the apply portion. Um, but if you ever get stuck, our help section is a great resource. It's a wealth of information. Um, you don't have to be logged in. So if you don't yet have an account, you can come in here, find out information on how to create your account, um, info on your profile, frequently asked questions, um, just more information on what it's like to work in the federal government um, with various information. And at any point, if you come across a term that you might not be familiar with in a job posting, might not understand exactly what that means, we have a great glossary up here that allows you to search for those terms. Um, and then you can, once you find that term you're looking for, if you select it, that will then give you a definition of what that information is. And so uh, that covers the uh, USA Jobs run through, a demo of USA Jobs. And so I know that was a, a pretty quick uh, run through of the program, but um, if you wanna take a look at the help section to get started, it's a great resource. Um, and I will pass it back to Monique. Thank you.
Wow. Thank you, Keenan. I mean, where was this 15 years ago when I was trying to figure out how to use USA Jobs? But I'm grateful to have been at Ed the entire time, so I haven't had to use it so much more. Um, but yeah, we have a couple questions in the chat for you. And since we have a couple minutes before we're scheduled to transition to Robin, if it's okay, I'll just go ahead and read them to you so that we can address a few. Now, Latrice, you asked the question about... Um, about recent uh, opportunities for recent grads. And if you see below, there's a response now from John about that. And so if, if that's okay with you, I will leave that response there and ask the next one. So for Keenan, you did the PMF program. So for those that are not familiar, PMF is a Presidential Management Fellows Program. So the question here is, do they restrict the types of degrees that they want? Like is social science, like education or psychology needed? Is there a list? So I, I don't want to speak specifically for the PMF program um, because I don't work for the PMF program, but well, I, I, I'll talk a little bit about it. Uh, to answer your question, uh, no, there's no, there are no restrictions that I'm aware of. Um, I know the, the PMF program. I'm actually serving as a PMF ambassador right now, um, which is a, a new program that for past PMFs. Um, and so really what we're trying to do is to reach out and, and find uh, diverse candidates with diverse degrees, diverse backgrounds. Um, from all over the country, all walks of life. Um, and so uh, at a high level to answer that question, uh, no, there aren't restrictions on certain degrees, um, various degrees out there. I know a, a lot of people from backgrounds or degrees that you might have never even heard of that uh, came into the PMF program. So that's a great question. Yeah, and if it's helpful, I dropped the link in the chat. I also coach for that program. It's a, a wide variety, and it's based on the agency. So you can apply to an agency, select who they want to work, um, for them once they get into that program. So there are a lot of agencies, including education, and we've had PMS students. And so I have former colleagues that, I mean, former fellows that have become colleagues. So it's definitely open to you guys. The link is in the chat. Um, the next question, what should we tell applicants that applied and were referred, but never called for interview and the status in USA job never changes from the word referred? Sorry, could you repeat that one one more time? Sure. Sorry, it says, what should we tell applicants that applied and were referred, but never called for interview and the status in the USA jobs never changes from the word referred? Gotcha. And so this is from the, uh, is this from the HR side of things, do you know, or is this from? I just have the like, name. It sounds like okay. HR maybe. Yeah. Gotcha. So um, what, one thing I will say is that the USA job side of things. So when I showed you those those pills that we have with the update on the status for your application. Uh, so that on the USA job side of things, that is all conferred and done by the agencies themselves. So as I mentioned earlier, once you apply through USA jobs, you'll then be sent to that agency to their talent acquisition, acquisition system. And so it's up to that agency then to update that information. Um, whereas USA jobs, we don't, we don't have any say in that or any part in that. So that's kind of a question specifically for those agencies, um, because again, it's up to them if they update that information or not. Um, and so while we encourage that and we, we really hope and we've tried to make it as easy as possible for them to update those statuses, that might not always be the case. But that is a great question. And, uh, Thank one that you. And that's, and that's an even better answer. Again, ladies and gentlemen, please, uh, I guess I can't see you clapping, but let's thank Keenan Emmett from the Office of Personal Management for this very informational presentation. If you're looking for federal employment or looking to transition, that's the USA Jobs is a platform for you. Now to move the program along, we're going to introduce, I'm going to introduce Robin Fernkes. She's a deputy administrator for the Office of Workforce Investment from the U.S. Department of Labor. Robin? Hi, everyone. It is great to be here today. Um, I'm so excited to join you. I am going to take a little bit different tact here from um, Keenan's, and that is I'm going to share some of our federal resources um, that we have to that you can use either yourself or to help others in your community to connect to quality training and infrastructure jobs that we um, hope will support an equitable recovery. So if we can go to the next slide, I'm gonna, through this presentation, I'm gonna give you a little bit of background about the public workforce system.
to let you know how you can access these free employment and training services. The good news is that our funding does flow to every state and these services are available at the local level through a network of American job centers and service providers. Before I tell you about our American job centers, I did want to say a little bit about our workforce development boards. They are these boards set priorities for their communities training investments to meet their regional labor market demand. And they are key partners and conveners who align and leverage workforce development investments across their economic regions. So they're important partners as you're doing your workforce development planning. So if we can go to the next slide, as I said, we have this network of um, American job centers, approximately 2,400 across the country. And through these centers, you can access an array of services that help anywhere from writing your resume to preparing for a job interview um, or to helping with your job search. Sorry, I've got something in my eye. Um, but the types of services that you can access there, some of them are in person and some of them are virtual. They are basic career services. Um, they do have some ability to help you with some skill assessment if you're not sure um, if you're, you know, eligible for a certain job or if they can help you with some job placement. They can provide labor market information if you want to know about the jobs that are available in your area. Um, they also can do some individualized career services, such as uh, helping you with an employment plan or um, doing some interviewing workshops, as I said, to help you with building some soft skills. And if you feel that you need more training to transition from one career field to another or to begin your career, um, American Job Centers can provide vouchers for you to pursue classroom training through eligible training providers, or they can also, um, it may be at referral to a registered apprenticeship program or a work and learn program, as we said, so that you can actually earn a paycheck while you're continuing your um, academic studies. Some of this training, as I said, occurs um, at the sites and, and others, the rest of the training can occur at an institution of higher education or um, at a, some of the other service providers. We do have business service representatives at each of the American Job Centers, and they offer a range of customized training options to meet businesses' needs. Um, so you may be wondering, how do I find these centers? And we do have a service locator. Um, it's, and I'll provide the, the uh, web link a little in the next slide, but it's www.careeronestop.org and forward slash our service locator. So that can help you find one of the centers in your community. And if we go to the next slide, I wanted to say that in addition to these centers that we have around the country, the Department of Labor also has a, several, a suite of online tools for you to use. And these, um, as the slide shows here, this is Career One Stop. These web-based tools provide solutions to unemployed workers, career counselors, economic developers, educators, parents, students, businesses, and workforce development professionals, as well as job seekers. So our through, through these websites, you can find labor market information, career information, links to many types of state and local labor exchange services, and information on transferable skills. So if you're looking to change careers, um, there's information on these sites. So if we go to the next slide, this actually is a screenshot of the Career One Stop homepage. And if you go there, as you can see, you can explore your careers, 
if you're looking for that, you can, there's a whole host of resources that you can look for. Again, if you're looking for that American Job Center, if you go to the tab that says find local help, and if you're just looking for training or, or toolkits, um, these are on here as well. We do have a Spanish version of the site as well as um, an English version. The next slide shows you um, that in addition to our career one stop, we also have a tool which we call, oh, sorry, this is the same tool. <laughs> um, getting ahead of myself. This just shows you that this has some interest assessments and other assessment tools. Again, if you really don't know where to start and you're really trying to find a career, um, these are the types of tools that can help give you some information about things that you might be interested in. There's also um, more detailed career information. You can watch videos if you, you know, if you're looking to learn more about um, what a job entails or what a career entails. And then also um, resources to find the, um, find the training that would be needed to go into those careers. So on our next slide, this is another tool that we have called My Next Move. And this really gives individuals three main ways to explore your careers. And this is including online ONET interest assessments. Again, more tools that I mentioned before um, that provide an easy to read one page profile of each occupation. So these are our um, profile, their occupational profiles. We also have, um, if you go to the next slide, that was the home page. If this is um, this is a more detailed account of it tells you about the knowledge, skills, and abilities, as well as the technologies used in a particular occupation. So if you're looking at, say you want to be a mechanical engineer, this will tell you what you need. And then it also gives you some simplified salary and outlook information and links to find specific training and employment opportunities for those occupations. So in closing, wherever you are in your career process, I do hope you'll take advantage of the services and opportunities available through the public workforce system. And I also hope that you'll engage with your state and local development boards as strategic partners um, using the many resources that they have available. Um, and as I stated up front, we really want to connect individuals to quality training and infrastructure jobs that will support an equitable recovery. And we really would like your assistance in spreading the word about these tools. So thank you, Monique. Thank you, Robin. Again, another information packed presentation. We also have a few minutes here to take a couple questions. Now I need to look at them and see which ones are run over from Keenan and maybe you can help us with them. Um, so it says here, do many of the agencies that post these jobs have hiring cycles? For example, does budget appropriation impact when agencies are capable of hiring? And I think that may be one for Keenan in terms okay. of the jobs that are posted on um, OPM's okay. website. Okay. All right. Um, all right, cool. So yeah, I think the rest of these might be run over from Keenan. So we'll try to get these questions. Keenan, are you still here? Do you mind hopping on to help us answer these questions? Yeah, I can I can jump on. Um, okay, cool. Sorry, let me take a All look right. at some of these in the chat here. Yeah, then you and between the two of you, you can tell me. We have just a couple of minutes. So the okay. question was, do many of the agencies that post these jobs have hiring cycles? For example, does budget appropriation impact when agencies are capable of hiring? Uh, yeah, to answer that question, I, I think not to speak for most agencies again, but um, I, there are at least what I notice a lot of cycles that happen uh, for federal hiring. And to that point, yes, budget can affect that. 
Okay. Next question, either uh, either of you. Uh, is it likely for candidates with no affiliation to current or previous federal employees to be considered for opportunities or are candidates with affiliations generally considered for openings? Sorry, let me find that one in the... Yeah. Um, okay. All right. I'll, I'll keep reading. Um, yeah. And I'll take a look at some of these too. Sorry, I'm trying to scroll through the chat. It can be kind of difficult. You're fine. I'll just take one more and then we'll go ahead, we'll go we'll go ahead and move on, okay? Because we can always like add them in the chat. Um, the question here says, can you explain this question that's often on the application? Do you currently have parentheses or have previously held? I'm sorry, do you currently hold or have previously held on a permanent basis a position in the competitive service? or in another merit system of which OPM has an interchange agreement with promotion potential equivalent to higher than the full performance level of the position advertised in this vacancy announcement. That's from Terry Aimed, if you can see it in the chat. Cool, I just found that one. So sorry, okay. that was a lot to, to take in. So that was a lot, that yeah, I'm then, so sorry. Yeah, no problem. Um, so I can try and answer some of these in the chat as well, or at the end or whatever, whatever's easiest. Okay. Yeah, we have like two minutes, so you could try right now, or we could just answer later. And then Robin, if you can drop the links in the chat, someone asked you to put the links for some of the websites you shared in the chat, that'd be super helpful. Sure, I just did All that. Right. I just dropped the link to the um, service locator that I mentioned to find your American Job Center. Okay, thank you. And again, I just want to thank both Keenan and Robin for their information. For those of you watching, I know for me, again, I've been a Fed for 15 years. Like, I was like, oh my gosh, this is like a, 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 a handbook of things to do, a walkthrough. And so please do not um, keep this information to yourself. So please be sure to share the resources with other people. That being said, I want to again thank Keenan and Robin and turn the conversation back over to Seneca. Well, thanks so much, Monique, for um, hosting that first panel. Um, such a wealth of information and certainly um, helps me in a, in a number of ways um, with folks who are always requesting information about how to navigate USA jobs and actually um, get past just the application process. So really want to um, thank Keenan and, and Robin for their presentations. So um, again, Seneca Franklin, Associate Director with the initiative. Um, I just wondered how many folks, um, and you can, you know, um, raise your hand or, you know, use the, the reactions button in the, in the chat. But I just wonder how many folks know that each of the initiatives, specifically the HBCU initiative, works with 37 federal agencies um, and what we call our interagency working group. So um, I have the pleasure of having four representatives with me today um, from a number of federal agencies. Um, although they may be headquartered here in DC, 80% um, of federal jobs are also located outside of the nation's capital. Um, and the federal government is hiring throughout the country, which um, you heard Denise mentioned. Um, so if you live in a rural or urban area, we still have jobs for you. Um, the federal government is really um, adopting best practices regarding telework and remote work um, and providing even more opportunities for Americans to stay competitive um, in, in the workplace. So again, I'm, I'm joined by um, Tammy Jones from the Department of Transportation, Tony Bayless from um, the Department of Energy, John Castaneda uh, from the Office of the, um, the Department of the Interior, and um, Jacqueline Ponte Lazaruk from um, USDA or the U.S. Department of Agriculture. So each of these folks are going to have five minutes for a quick download on their employment opportunities, and then we'll provide um, time later in small groups for agencies to um, answer any questions that you may have um, directly. So let's go ahead and get started with um, Ms. Tammy Jones, Corporate Recruitment Manager for the U.S. Department of Transportation. Tammy? All right. 
All right, good afternoon, and thank you, Sedeca. I am so happy to be here. As Sedeca mentioned, I'm Tammy Jones with the Department of Transportation. I serve as the Corporate Recruitment Manager as well as program manager for some of our student intern opportunities. And so what that means as far as the corporate recruitment manager is that I am responsible for going out and coming up with strategies to find students and entry level just like you. And I have to tell you, it's a very exciting part of my job to have the opportunity to serve on panels such as this, to have the opportunity to talk and meet with uh, students, and then answer your questions about what it's like to be with the and work for the Department of Transportation, as well as helping you to prepare to do so. Next slide, please. So at the Department of Transportation, a lot of people may not know exactly what we are responsible for, what our mission includes. Our mission is to deliver the world's leading transportation system, serving the American people and the economy through safe, efficient, sustainable, and equitable movement of people and of goods. In a minute, you're going to have an idea, a better idea of what I mean by people and of goods. Our values represent our guiding principles that are at the core of who we are as a department and how we approach our work. Our values are at the foundation of a strategic approach to achieve our mission. They guide how we work with partners and how we treat each other, which is so, so important in this current climate. In serving the public, we strive to live up to these values in everything that we do. Our values include excellence, trust, fairness, empathy, and imagination. And I will tell you that this summer, I have the pleasure of hosting two students from HBCUs. And I cannot wait until they get on board to help me and, and bring in their innovative, creative ideas. Um, because an area that I lack is social media, and I'm looking forward to those students showing me new, innovative ways, creative ways, using their imagination to bring about more ways to attract our agency. Next slide, please. The Department of Transportation has a roughly about 55,000 even plus employees throughout. Um, the FAA is one of our largest operating administrations. We also have the Federal Highway, Federal Motor, Federal Railroad, Federal Transit, Maritime, and NHTSA or National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. I work out of the Office of the Secretary, which we oversee all of these operating administrations. We also have OIG and our Volpe Center. Next slide, please. Within each one of those operating administrations, these are a list of our job opportunities. There are more, but I couldn't fit them all on the slide. But we hire for STEM occupations as well as non-STEM occupations. In the world of transportation, we need everyone. We need budget analysts. We need attorneys. We need contract specialists. We're looking for economists, engineers, all sorts of engineers. I'm in HR. And we're looking for people to serve as human resource specialists, realty specialists, mathematicians, we look for people in our communications office. We look for writers. So it's not that you don't have the skills. You have it. We're looking for you. We want you to be a part of who we are at the Department of Transportation. I've provided a QR code so that you can go and scan that code. Go And it'll take you directly to USA Jobs. At the entry level, we have about 152 jobs that we are seeking and that are currently open, seeking your expertise. We also offer intern opportunities through the Pathways Program. 
We offer internal opportunities through our Minority Serving Institutions Program. We also offer intern opportunities through our Future Leaders Program. These are ways that we go out and bring in students into the agency so that we can be the next generation and employee of choice. My contact information is at the bottom should you have any questions. Thank you. Back to you, Seneca. Thank you so much, Tammy. Did you say there's over 55,000 employees already at transportation? Oh yeah, 55, yes. And you're growing, so that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, we're growing, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> that's oh, amazing, yeah. that's amazing. And I yeah. learned something new. I didn't know that um, realty specialist was a thing at Department of Transportation. Absolutely. You know? Wow, wow, so thank you for that. Um, yeah. we're, gonna, we're gonna keep on moving. Um, and next up is the U.S. Department of Energy. Um, and before we go to Tony Bayless, Senior Advis um, I'm sorry, Senior Advisor for the Clean Energy Corps in the Office of Economic Impact and Diversity at the U.S. Department of Energy, and also the DEI Director for Lawrence Livermore National Laboratories, we have a a message that we wanted to share with you from the Secretary of Energy. Thank you, uh, Seneca, and thank you, Secretary Granholm. Uh, I couldn't say it any better than that, um, and I thought the video, thought the video would basically uh, really deliver um, our point, is that we're looking for you, and we really want you to basically apply. And as a result, uh, there are a number of different opportunities for you, and we think um, we will have uh, a wonderful opportunity that is directly made for you. The uh, department and the Clean Energy Corps is made up of staff from more than a dozen offices across DOE, and the staff basically work uh, collaboratively to basically uh, do research, to develop, um, demonstrate, and deploy, as the secretary stated. Um, and we're really looking for diverse talent. Um, we've been uh, really given a charge uh, with an investment of $62 billion to deliver equitable, clean energy. And it's all for you um, and your loved ones. So with that said, you know, we have currently over uh, 750 new jobs uh, with these diverse backgrounds that were mentioned um, that are looking to really address the challenges. Uh, but not only that, bring teams together to be innovative for those solutions as well. So um, we were granted as part of the effort, and I saw a question in there around uh, hiring timelines. We were given special direct hiring authority to meet a lot of these critical hiring needs that we basically have today. Um, and we have a special application portal uh, for uh, to collect the resumes and all interested candidates really should uh, apply through that portal and uh, we will uh, be looking to respond. We've uh, engaged uh, over 500 individuals to uh, help us with uh, review of basically competency areas for our uh, uh, jobs and then people will go on to uh, different technical interviews after they uh, have the first layer of competency interviews. Um, we basically are trying to do this in a very thoughtful way and deliberate manner, um, trying to use uh, a framework uh, of diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility as part of our process, and keeping in mind our high integrity of values and division for DOE. Next slide. So uh, as mentioned, you can find uh, a lot of the jobs up on USA Jobs in the Department of Energy. You can also go to the Clean Energy uh, Core uh, at the Department of Energy as well and, and use that application portal. And then for those of you who are students and uh, soon to be PhDs, um, there are definitely opportunities for you to learn more about the opportunities that may be particular to you. 
Uh, there's definitely career uh, continuing education opportunities and things of that nature for all of uh, the graduate students and undergraduate students there. We have a very vibrant program in the Department of Energy for minority serving institutions and a rich relationship with historically black colleges and universities. So uh, with that, uh, I'll close my time so we can make sure we stay on time. Um, and uh, wanna thank Seneca and uh, the team for inviting the Department of Energy to be a part of this webinar. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Tony. And um, I heard the secretary say there were a thousand jobs. So you said there's still 750 that are available right now. Yeah, yeah. So there, there are definitely um, uh, 750 that we basically are, are uh, trying to make sure we get the funding move. Uh, for some of the folks, that was a question earlier in regard to funding. And as a result, we're trying to make sure all that funding that flows through the government agencies as some of us know, um, it flows a little bit slower than what we like, but it, it gets there. Um, and our uh, human capital officers, uh, who are really, really wonderful individuals, are working with all the different departments and agencies within DOE to basically uh, help firm up uh, the funding base for these positions and moving them out. Uh, we have um, uh, hiring that is going on at a senior level. Um, but we are looking for talent all across the board, and it's going to take us a while to fill all of these positions. So uh, we want to encourage you to really apply, um, and we'll get you through. Um, but um, keep in mind that, um, you know, we are going to have to take uh, some time to respond uh, with the number of applicants. Because if you have over 20,000 applicants, you know, give us a break. <laughs> we, we're going to have to actually go through all of them and try to figure out where do you basically fit best for us to leverage your skill set in the manner that we need to, to use it for this task that we've been given by the government. Great. Thanks for, for sharing that, um, Tony. So we're asking folks to go out to the Clean Energy Applicant Portal, right. which is where you will find those Clean Energy Core jobs. Um, and to also pack a little patience once you submit your application. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now. All right. Thanks, Tony. You're very welcome. Thank you. All right. Let's um, keep it moving with the U.S. Department of the Interior, John Castaneda, Acting Director of Strategic Talent Management Division in the Office of Human Capital at the U.S. Department of the Interior. John. Thank you. Good afternoon. And again, thank you, Sedica, in the Office of Science and Technology Policy for welcoming the Department of the Interior to provide you all with information regarding talent search hiring, specifically regarding the bipartisan infrastructure law. Again, my name is John Castaneda. I'm the Acting Director for Strategic Talent Management in Interior's Office of Human Capital. President Biden's bipartisan infrastructure law contains several provisions that directly invest in the Department of the Interior initiatives and benefit the communities and areas which we directly serve. Interior received $28.1 billion across our bureaus and offices dedicated to the restoration of critical habitats, addressing drought crisis, assisting with wildland fire management, and helping communities prepare for extreme weather events. Here at Interior, we realize that success and implementation of the bipartisan infrastructure law is through frequent collaboration with tribal, local, state, and federal leaders and the respective communities. DOI continues to face an acute need for skilled workforce that is amplified by the planning and project demands of the infrastructure law. Hiring managers and human resources professionals are working collaboratively, front and center, to carry through on the commitment to build back better from the pandemic. While interior leadership recognizes the dire need to recruit and fill essential and mission-driven roles, Infrastructure and investment jobs are needed to meet new objectives and priorities, which rest on top of other critical hiring needs the federal government must concurrently accomplish. Since its inception more than a century ago, the Department of the Interior has relied upon the integration of research and education to carry out its mission, engaging millions of Americans in conservation and natural resource sciences through its resource management, recreation, natural hazards and education programs on our nation's public lands. 
modern trends in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, education and employment, along with changes in demographics and youth interests, suggest that the skilled workforce needed at Interior to fill mission critical positions and support the engagement of citizens in informed decision making can be best obtained by increasing science literacy and engagement. The intentional and strategic alignment of existing resources, leveraging our current programs and expanding partnerships will allow Interior to strengthen those education and career pathways that will attract and prepare the future workforce and contribute to the development of a scientifically literate public whom Interior must engage daily and address complex issues in our communities. Based on current hiring targets, the Department of Interior is set to increase our workforce by nearly 700 positions. And that's in addition to the 70,000 employees already on roll. In various occupations across 11 technical bureaus, each with a distinct yet complementary focus on natural and cultural resources. Some of these jobs include biology and natural resource management, who study sensitive habitats, develop natural resource regulations and guidance, help protect lives, property, and resources from fires, inventory and monitor wildlife or vegetation, and analyze and mitigate environmental impacts and restore and protect threatened animals and plants. The duties performed by DOI natural resource specialists vary greatly by location, bureau, and even by position. Environmental assessment and protection, which includes the protection or improvement of abandoned mines or orphaned oil and gas wells, which pose serious safety hazards, while also causing ongoing air, water, and other environmental damage. Therefore, a need for environmental quality assessments, pollution control, remedies for environmental damage to ensure compliance with environmental laws and regulations is much needed. Uh, we heard from our partners at the uh, Department of Energy. Same, civil engineers, which support offshore, excuse me, offshore renewable energy projects, affect decisions about waterways, storm erosion, and fish protection, or ensure the safe and efficient design, construction, operation, and maintenance of major public works projects such as dams, bridges, power plants, and water conveyance systems. DOI civil engineers balance development with protection of the environment. Electrical engineering, which will support electrical equipment and systems at DOI facilities and ensure the safe and effective operation of electrical systems across the country, including headquarters and administrative office buildings, national parks, wildlife refuge and monuments, all the way to national critical infrastructures, such as the Hoover Dam on the Arizona and Nevada border. These are just to name a few of those occupations in science and technology. Now, Interior must also be poised to answer the call for one time, excuse me, on time and on budget delivery. To accomplish such a historic investment, DOI must rely upon partnerships from across government, union, and industry to produce meaningful outcomes, including accountability and transparency to ensure public dollars are invested efficiently and effectively. Here at the Department of Interior, we strive for a collective, collaborative, all hands-on approach to drive implementation of infrastructure investment to achieve the best outcomes on cost and performance. Interior will support state, local, and tribal governments delivering these projects through training, technical assistance, and procurement best practices. Our plan to accomplish these important tasks include hiring budget analysts, helping DOI accomplish our mission to protect and manage public lands by formulating and justifying the federal budget, ensuring resources that are needed are met, and executing, executing budgets to manage operations with optimal efficiency and ensuring accountability and resource management. Uh, also grants and financial management specialists who manage, award, obligate infrastructure funding for grants, cooperative agreements, and other related instruments and services using financial and business or negotiation principles. There's countless ways that information technology systems and services enable and enhance the productivity, efficiency, and effectiveness of the thousands of people who can serve, protect, and manage public lands and resources. The Department of Interior needs experts to provide the full range of IT services to its large and widely dispersed workforce, from cybersecurity to enterprise architecture and customer support. Aligning IT strategies with the organizational goals and objectives of the department will help DOI successfully meet its mission far into the future. Of course, I would be remiss if I didn't mention Interior's ongoing commitment to diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility. Interior has taken an evidence-based approach to determining where to focus strategies for DEIA. 
Oops, sorry. Uh, standing up an enterprise data visualization capability memorialized as the My DOI Career Platform. Essentially, DOI solution to career exploration, similar to what we saw at USA Jobs and Job Seeker Resources at the Department of Labor. I've also provided a link in the chat. The My DOI Career Initiative was developed to increase diversity and equity in Interior's workforce through transparency and provide access to information that can prepare diverse employees to take advantage of opportunities. My DOI Career Communication and Outreach encourages and supports workforce mobility, continued growth, and aids DOI to increase retention rates by promoting career variety for DOI employees. Our cross-functional and collaborative approach to developing Interior Strategic Plan for DEIA and the federal workforce includes partners from Human Resources, Diversity and Inclusion Leadership, Business Operations, and our employee advocacy groups. The department is leveraging the My DOI Career Initiative and website is designed to promote opportunities in an inclusive and equitable manner. Uh, the My DOI Career Initiative has partnered with Diversity Joint Venture for Conservation Careers to prototype tech-based tools that will aid in matching diverse categories of students to cross-sector internship opportunities. Um, with that, I'm happy to yield back to my colleagues in OSTP. And again, thank you so much for your attention. And that was a lot of information, but please visit DOI Careers. There's a lot of great information and a lot of instruction on how to find some of the jobs available at the Department of the Interior. Thanks, Senator. As always, a, a wealth of information budget analysts, grantees, um, grantee management, financial management, IT jobs, the full gamut, right? The full gamut, absolutely. <laughs> Thanks, <From> John. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. Um, so if you're interested in those jobs, be sure to um, reach out to um, USA Jobs and put in DOI, Department of the Interior. Our last, um, thanks again, John. Our last lightning round presentation will um, be about federal jobs and rural development. Um, and I'd like to welcome Jacqueline Ponte Lazarek, Chief Innovation Officer in the Office of Rural Development at the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Hi there. Can you hear me okay? Can hear you fine. Great. Thank you. If you could go to the third slide. Um, since everyone's telling their numbers, USDA has over 100,000 employees across the country. We touch every part of every person's life in this country in some form or fashion. I work for uh, rural development, and although I have what I think is the best job at USDA, I am the chief innovation officer and in charge of um, all the data analytics and evaluation work. Uh, regulations, management, policy development, and um, strategic engagement strategies. Um, I have run both our telecommunications program, our water program, and um, done a lot of initiatives across rural development. So it is a great place to work. If you take one thing away from today's session, um, it's that rural development and USDA is a terrific place to work. It is not the USDA of the past. Uh, it has changed significantly over the almost 20 years I've been here at USDA. Um, and it is, it is a place that if you join it, there, there's much to make you want to stay and people do stay and have long careers here. Our goal is simple. Our, our mission is simple. We're here to help rural areas and rural areas, um, need our help. We are the only federal agency who is uniquely focused, solely focused on the needs of rural communities and making sure that they get what they need, whether it's infrastructure, housing, uh, business development. And so we'll scroll through to the next slide. We have uh, employees who work across the country. We do have some employees here in Washington where I work, uh, but we do have employees who live and work where they serve their customers across the country in uh, state offices and area offices. We have a really terrific Secretary of Agriculture who has leaned in on um, telework and remote work. And so we have a lot of jobs that even if you're working for Washington, D.C., in fact, most of my staff is not in Washington, D.C., you can work remotely. Um, and so it's, it's, it's a very open, flexible uh, environment. Next slide. Um, so when you're asking yourself, you know, what is rural, uh, there, it has different definitions by program, but 
really it spans from everywhere from the tiniest town, right? Um, in the hundreds of people. And for our highest definition, we're at about 50,000. And Congress can change that definition, but right now that's where we range. So if you took a job working for rural development, you uh, would be working with towns of this size. Next slide. Go on next slide. So we talked a little bit. We, we like to say we can build a town from the ground up. You can see straight down the center, uh, some of the, the infrastructure programs that you might recognize in our electric program. We don't just do electric infrastructure. Uh, we do a lot of solar. We do ener energy efficiency programs. Uh, our telecommunications program is is mostly broadband, but we are we are the reason this agency is the reason that telephone service got out to rural America at all. And we were way ahead of the curve in rural areas funding um, advanced infrastructure to move rural areas into the broadband space. There is still a gap in broadband service. The majority of unserved communities in the U.S. are sitting in rural areas and remote areas. And um, so it's important to us that we get broadband deployment out there and developing a telecommunications workforce in those areas has been challenging due to limited investment in rural broadband infrastructure. Um, water and waste, which I ran for about a decade, provides clean water and sanitary sewer and stormwater management. Um, you know, hard infrastructure, uh, great program to, to work in and is delivered locally. And then you'll see on either side in our uh, we have other programs that are run in one of our three uh, sub agencies. But we do um, all kinds of energy, biofuels, uh, large uh, energy production uh, plants. We in our uh, rural um, housing service, we have a community facilities program. So we are building community infrastructure as well. Um, firehouses and schools and hospitals. Um, there is no lack of interesting projects at rural development because anything a town needs, we can fund. And we need people to help us uh, get all of our funding out. We put out, um, you know, almost, almost $40 billion every year to support development in rural areas. Next slide. Uh, in case you are interested in our programs, I always give a link to the program matrix. Go take a look at it. Uh, you, you may be interested in knowing the variety of programs. It'll also give you an idea of the type of, of um, jobs that we might have available. Next slide. So speaking of jobs, um, one of the things we do with our programs is develop jobs um, for rural areas, but in order to make that happen, we need to have workers. And the variety of jobs that we have at rural development is uh, very broad and very deep and similar to some of the ones you've heard today. Um, for the majority of our infrastructure programs, we're looking for loan specialists and grant specialists and uh, technicians who help uh, work with communities to develop their applications and then review their applications and then uh, follow up on those applications after uh, as as uh, recipients uh, build out their um, infrastructure. We need engineers. We need architects. We need environmental protection specialists, um, community engagement specialists. So everything from the person who is reviewing an application to the engineer who's not only looking at it up front, but is kicking the tires on the project in the field uh, afterwards um, to the community uh, economic development specialists who are sitting down with communities, helping them plan for their future and figure out, you know, how best to get there. Um, we have also jobs for general field representatives. These are, they can be accountants, they can be engineers, they can be, um, more generalists than that, but they are, these are our folks in our telecommunications and our uh, electric programs who are out there working hand in hand with applicants. So if you are somebody who does not want to be chained to a desk and would like to be out in the field, um, working with people, traveling uh, around a state or a region or multiple states, and you, you like to be out, you like to have a variety in your schedule, we are the place for you. There's a lot of windshield time if you want it. Uh, we do also have back office jobs. If you are somebody who really loves to be 
um, you know, in an office and you like that structure, we have those jobs too. Management analysts, program analysts, procurement specialists, budget analysts for all those back office jobs. In my shop, we, we hire everything from writers to community economic development specialists, but our data shop is hiring uh, statisticians and economists and data scientists and um, sociologists and uh, the whole gamut. Anything we need to not only um, track our performance, build our dashboards, build strategic uh, tools that allow our leadership to make informed decisions uh, to evaluation of our programs. That is very exciting to us. We are a young entity, the Innovation Center, to have. We have a staff that is uh, 22 people strong and growing that is supporting all the strategic work. Um, including um, a project that we we're doing around equity where, where the Innovation Center was able to use our data shop and our, our partnerships folks to, to build out a project that our field staff are um, working in and really trying to reach out to areas um, that are socially vulnerable and disadvantaged. If you are somebody who wants to work in a place that has a mission you can connect to, you you like rural areas. You don't have to love rural areas coming in, but but they will they will hook you in. You want a mission that connects to people and helping people, and is steeped in uh, you know you could, it could be a STEM job, but it could be uh, more of a community development specialist. You want to be a community planner. We have those jobs at Rural Development, and we um, if you scroll down. To the next slide, we did receive some funding in the um, Infrastructure Act. Our funding was around broadband. Um, they did; re they are able to uh, staff up. We do have some jobs that uh, we are going to be filling. We um, to implement the goals of the uh, infrastructure law. Uh, our U.S. is looking for additional talent to join our team, and we have a goal of hiring 33 full-time employees. We've already hired 12, so we've got more coming. What I will tell you is, you know, the broadband jobs will continue to grow. Uh, rural development is severely understaffed. And um, over time, we've not only had a um, large number of retirements uh, because we have people who stay 20, 30. We had gentlemen who stayed 50 plus years, um, but they have now retired. And so we are looking to replace and, and staff up. Um, and that variety is here for you if you would like it. Um, I also reached out to our colleagues at um, uh, NRCS, the Natural Resources and Conservation Service. They received uh, some funding in the Infrastructure Act, and they are also going to be staffing up. Next slide. So those jobs, same place, USA Jobs. So it's great you got the tutorial. I will tell you, I came in through the federal government um, back in the 90s, uh, but it was uh, it was we did, much different process. We didn't have USA jobs. It is a much, much more streamlined process and and not very hard to navigate. So um, I'm glad you got the demo today. I hope you will look for our jobs. You can search on rural development and it'll bring up all our jobs. You can search on USDA. Um, or you can search on the type of job you're looking for. We do hire pathways. We do uh, um, hire uh, postgraduate uh, folks. We hire people who, who, you know, we have many people who come in through the program uh, who have, don't necessarily um, have secondary degrees and they work their way through the system and they, and they have opportunity to move around, be mobile throughout USDA and move up the chain. So if I can leave you with uh, one thought, it's good place to work, great people, great mission, great mobility, great opportunity here at USDA. And I'm happy to connect with you. Well, thank you so much, Jackie. Um, Chief Innovation Officer really sounds like a fun job. It's awesome. Um, <laughs> And I want to thank the USDA for really, when you said broadband and bringing broadband to um, rural communities, I just want to thank um, the USDA for putting um, 
phone service in my mom's hometown of Camden, Tennessee, um, and allowing me to connect with my grandmother um, who lives in a rural community. So um, very well. thank you to, to USDA for that. Um, and certainly, you know, um, in my younger days, I always thought of USDA um, as just farms and crops. <laughs> right. But um, being a long-term federal employee with um, coming up on 20 years now, um, learned a lot along the way. So thank you for being here today. My pleasure. I want to um, thank everybody for joining us today. I know we've um, reached the end of our session and I know that um, I said that we were gonna do some breakouts, but we've come to come to a close. Um, as you can see with just the four agencies that um, had the opportunity to present today, there's so many opportunities um, in the federal government. And we want you to help us in building a better America um, and show, show once again that we can do some really big things. So please go out to um, OPM's bill.usajobs.gov to explore um, more opportunities um, to apply. And as, um, as Tony said, be patient. Um, our next session, for those who are following along with the infrastructure series um, that the initiative is putting on, our next session will be in May. So we hope that you will mark your calendars for that and be sure to spread the, res um, the registration information to your colleagues and friends so that they can glean um, the same information um, that, that you have received today. So um, with that, we are going to close out. I really appreciate your time. Um, and we will be posting these presentations on the initiative's website in the very near future. And with that, Marvin, I'll kick it back to you. That concludes our conference. Thank you for using event services. You may now disconnect.